Hi, I Aziz welcome you to Codemaster and in this video I am going to talk about order of growth of a function. So let's get started. In previous video we have seen that there are many factors affecting the performance of an algorithm like hardware, programming etc. Because of all of these external factors we were unable to determine which algorithm is best. We also seen in previous video that sometimes it happens that our slower program runs faster on faster machine and faster programs run slower on slower machine. So this is really confusing. Do we have any other way to figure out which algorithm is best? Yes, we do have one way to determine which algorithm is best and fast. And this is where order of growth comes into picture. What is order of growth? Order of growth tells about the growth of running time of an algorithm with respect to input size. So it means by using order of growth, we can calculate that how much running time our algorithm is taking to calculate the result. We provide different types of input to our algorithm and we keep increasing the size of the input. And as the input size increases, we note down the time taken by an algorithm to calculate the result. So basically order of growth is Nothing but it tells about the growth of running time of an algorithm. We want our running time to be really slow. We do not want our algorithm to be to grow faster. So let's see how order of growth help us to determine which algorithm is faster and which is efficient. Let's see with an example. Let's say we have a problem to find a square of a number. We wrote two programs. One program is efficient and one is inefficient. The function one is efficient program because we are doing only constant operation here and the time taken to calculate the result is c1. On the other end, the time taken by function 2 is c2 and plus c3. How I got this expression? See here we are doing constant amount of operation. These two operations sums up and it becomes c3. And here we are doing constant amount of operation for n number of times. So it becomes c2n. Now in this example what we are going to do, we will calculate the order of growth of both the functions, function 1 and function 2. And I will show you how order of growth help us in determining which function is better, function 1 or function 2. That was not possible previously because there are many external factors like machine, programming language which impacts the performance of the algorithm. So now what we are going to do, we will, we are going to execute our function 1 on a slower machine. So, so on slower machine the value of c1 would be 10. I assume that the value of c1 would be 10 because it is a slower machine so it takes 10 unit of time to, to execute. And we are going to execute our function 2 on a faster machine. So I assume the value of C2 and C3 would be 1. Why? Because it is a faster machine so it takes very less time to execute. Now we are going to pass different inputs to our function 1. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 10. And we can see that on every input it is giving us a constant amount of time. So for input size 1, it takes constant amount of time to execute. For input size 3, it takes constant amount of time to execute. And similarly for input size 10 it again takes the constant amount of time to execute. While on the other hand if we pass this inputs to function 2 we are passing similar same input to function 2 also. So if I pass 2 it takes 2 unit of time. If I pass 2 it takes 3 unit of time to execute. If I pass 3 it takes 4 unit of time to execute and similarly if I pass 10 it takes 11 unit of time to execute. How we are calculating this? just putting the value of c1 just putting the value of c2 and c3 on in this expression we get value of 2 let's say for 1 c2 is 1 1 into n is equal to 1 here, here n is also equal to 1 c1 c2 is also equal to 1 and c3 is also equal to 1 so we get 2 here our n is equal to 2 c2 is 1 and c3 is 1 so we get 3 now let's take all the input and all the running time and plot a graph of it. So when I plot a graph of all the values, we get this graph. For all the input of function 1, the function is taking constant amount of time in all the inputs. But this is not the same case in function 2. The function 2 is taking a linear amount of time to execute. See for input size 1, it takes 2 amount, 2 unit of time for input size 2. For input size 2 it takes 3 unit of time, for input size 3 it takes 4 unit of time. So by looking at this graph 
we can see that our function 2 is growing linearly and our function 1 is growing constantly. So if I ask what is the order of growth of function 1 and function 2? So the order of growth of function 2 is going to be constant and the order of growth of function 2 is going to be linear. So now you can see that it doesn't depend upon on which programming language our algorithm is written or on which machine our programs are running on. The order of growth gives us a clear picture that function 1 is slower and function 2 is faster. And generally we do not care about the small inputs in order of growth. Why? Because if the input is smaller then obviously your inefficient program is also going to work well. In real world we generally focus on larger input size. So let's discuss about the intersection point. What is this intersection point? So as we are giving the multiple inputs to both the function and each time we are increasing our input, so there will be a one point in the future where both the functions cross each other. And that, that converging point is called intersection point. And there is an interesting fact about this intersection point. If you see it clearly, below the intersection point, it seems like function 2 is performing really well. But if you see that above intersection point, our function 2 is always taking a more time than function 1. Why? Because it is growing linearly. If I give input size larger than 20, 30, 50, then our function 2 is going to take even more time to execute. But in case of function 1, even if I pass input size as 100 or 1000, it's always going to be a constant amount of time. And how I got this intersection point? See, the function 1 is running on a slower machine, so C1 is 10. Function 2 is running on a faster machine, so our C2 and C3 value is 1. So by calculating, we get n is equal to 9. 9 is the value above which our function 2 always get the more time to execute. And function 1 is always going to be a constant time. As you can see that how order of growth help us to determine which function is faster and which is slower. So in this example, function 1 is faster than function 2. Why? Order of growth of function 1 is constant and the order of growth of function 2 is linear. It means the order of growth of function 2 is much faster than function 1. And if you see it, function 1 even not, function 1 is even not growing. It is just a constant function. So at the last, if I ask you why we use order of growth instead of other factors, because order of growth tells us the running time of an algorithm. Basically the growth of running time of an algorithm and we are interested in the growth of running time of algorithm. And we are interested in the larger input size. We are not interested in the smaller input sizes. I hope now it is clear to you that how order of growth works. This is it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.